Hey Ronnie, thanks for inviting me to show off my 1996 Land Cruiser 80 series. So I'm going to show it to you now. Okay, so everything under the hood is stock, with the exception of my second battery tray. I've got two starting batteries, and the rest of it's stock. So what you're taking a look at here is the 24 valve straight six or inline six gasoline one FZFE Toyota Land Cruiser engine. And this one has 415,000 miles on it. It's the original engine to this vehicle, and the, uh, and the transmission is also original to this vehicle. They've never been uh, replaced or rebuilt. So I think in kilometers, that's about 668,000 kilometers. Original engine. That's the number one thing I love about this vehicle, that that engine is still strong after 415,000 miles. So I'm impressed with that. Now, Ronnie, a lot of times you talk about people who get into four-wheel driving and that there's a place in the market for everyone, whether they want to go cheap or if they want to spend a lot. And I got to tell you, I went cheap on almost everything except for mechanical parts. Anything that I replaced, I got genuine Toyota parts. So my front bar, for example, it's not a name brand. It's from a guy here in Florida who imports them. Um, it's heavy duty. I actually um, have unfortunately hit four deer while I've been driving this thing. This has been my daily commuter for the past four years. And at one point I was driving about 120 miles a day. I hit four deer. And the only thing that happened was this piece came off the right hand side. That was it, that's the only casualty. Uh, the winch I've got is the 12,000 pound Badland winch, which is compared to other name brands. And all of the comparisons show that it's just as powerful, just as capable as the name brand winches, but uh, it's at a fraction of the cost, about a third of the cost of the similar Warren winch. You can get that Badland winch. Okay, so looking at the roof rack, that came from the same guy that, um, sent, that I got the bumper from, SoFlo Bumpers. If you wanna look him up on Instagram, you can check him out. He's a supplier here, here in America, in Florida. Um, the lights on my roof rack, those are ebay lights so for what i do that's sufficient and way cheaper i am going to get some name brand lights to replace that curved led bar it's a 52 inch bar and uh, i'm just not happy with it but all the other lights are great i will tell you though that going cheap you'll see corrosion so those lights are four years old and you can see the corrosion that is a cheap ebay awning um oh there's some cool stickers out there check that out and let's go inside okay so inside the vehicle everything is pretty much stock i've got these great uh wet okole seat covers they're made out of material that is similar to a wetsuit and they are washable and they're fantastic so my seats with the age of this vehicle they needed some some attention so uh, instead of getting them reupholstered i just got some very nice tight fitting seat covers kind of wish i had gone for solid black now because the, the light color shows dirt easily. But again, they're easy to wash. This is my aftermarket radio. Got some aftermarket speakers because the stereos in these things are not great. Uh, I have the uh, model that is not triple locked. I have a locking center differential and I added the button so that I could turn it on without being in low. This is my light controller. It also has my train horn in it. <laughs> You don't have one of those you should get one they're a lot of fun uh when someone doesn't see the light turn green so here are just a few things i carry with me all the time i've got my uh, arb deflator a couple of knives right here uh, easy access okay 
So this is my rear bumper. Um, got a jerry can holder on the side, spare tire on the uh, right side. I carry my front runner hot plate or grill with me when I go out to the, to the woods, when I go on a camping trip. These are steps that attach to your spare tire. The front runner also sells. I think they're pretty cool for getting the stuff on the back of the roof rack. Let me open this thing up. So again, not a name brand rear bumper or bar, but it's doing great for me. The um, receiver is built into the rear bumper. It mounted to my vehicle using the existing uh, holes. Nothing had to be altered. Um, it's great. Got it from the same guy. So Flow Bumpers, not a name brand, but it's working fine for me. For what I do and for the frequency that I go out, it's perfect. I don't need to get something that uh, costs more than my vehicle. Uh, also, I don't think I mentioned, when I purchased this vehicle, I only spent $2,500 US. It needed paint job, needed a lot of stuff. So I have that in the back of my mind when I purchase things for the vehicle now. I'm not gonna buy something that costs more than the entire vehicle did at the time that I purchased it. Now I've invested a lot in it since then, but that's why I go economical whenever possible. This is my mountain hatch tailgate cover. It is basically food grade plastic cutting board. And so I've turned my, the whole surface area of my tailgate into a food prep area, as well as a place to fix stuff, work on, work on parts, whatever. It's easy to clean. Right now it's not clean, but if I were going to prep food, whoops, if I were going to prep food, it would be easy to get ready for that. Okay, this is my rear setup. I've got uh, two drawers from Landshark Outfitters. It's a, a guy here in the US that sends you a kit and you assemble it. And if you, ha if you need some drawers for your vehicle, check him out. He's got them for a number of different vehicles at this point, but they're awesome. They're uh, it's an aluminum frame that mounts to the existing rear seat holes. So you don't have to drill any new holes. You don't have to create any kind of brackets or anything. And it works great. So uh, check them out. So in the left-hand side, I carry tools and uh, some uh, bits and pieces. So I've got my wrenches or spanners. I've got here my socket set, some zip ties, some electrical parts. Uh, I've got a first aid kit in there. So I've got also first aid kits in the vehicle. Um, I've also got um, electrical parts. I've got an electrical tester, soldering iron, all that. I carry this stuff with me all the time because this vehicle, it has 415,000 miles on it. I don't know if I mentioned that already, but because of that, I carry a lot of spares with me. Oh, also, I have a little bit of a problem with knives and axes, so I I carry quite a few of those with me. There's my front runner dinnerware cutlery set. So let's see what I got in here. Well, I got this thing. It's useful. I got this thing. It's useful. I got a cheap hatchet. It's all right. Oh, this is my favorite. This is the Gerber machete with built-in saw. So I carry this with me all the time. Let me get it out for you. That's it. If you saw my fire to fork parody video, you will have seen this. This saw is unbelievably sharp. Works great. I need to sharpen it and get the rust off the blade, but this is a good product. If you need something like this, check them out. All right, so um, I like to cook over the fire. If you have seen my videos, you might have figured that out. Um, and hatchets are important to me. I also will take my electric chainsaw if I think I'm gonna be chopping or you know cutting up some serious wood but uh, this is the best hatchet that money can buy s-wing it's impressive full tang metal handle hatchet and then this is the fiskers uh splitting axe fantastic make short work of any firewood that you're cutting up so i also carry my um some spare fluids i carry fluids to replace anything in the vehicle to be honest with you um Again, 415,000 miles. In here, I've got spare hoses and belts for the vehicle. Uh, right back here, I have a sack that has all of my recovery gear in it. My straps, my D-rings, uh, gloves, the uh, winch blankets or winch dampers, all that in the bag. So, And I don't have it here in the back. I used to have it in this drawer, but then I was stuck in some water in the you know the back of the vehicle one time and i couldn't get to it so i quit that i put it right behind the back seat so i can just reach over the seat and grab it so i think that's a good tip if uh, you're trying to figure out where to store your stuff this is my 
35 liter G DFG off-road fridge. The fridge is sold under the name Brass Monkey in Australia is what I'm told. Uh, it's fridge freezer combo. I've used it several times now. I don't keep it running all the time. I only turn it on when I'm going to use it and it works great for me. Up top here is some, uh, you know, ceiling storage that I kind of mocked together. I got these brackets from Delta. Uh, you can see them online. They make a lot of stuff for land cruisers and other vehicles. And then that shelf is just like a kitchen shelf, you know, for some sort of uh, Ikea thing, I believe. And it fit in there perfectly. So I, I, you know, mounted that in so I could have some high storage. Got my paper towels, got my shop towels, aluminum foil, that kind of stuff. In this drawer, I have my cooking stuff. And I carry it with me all the time. So, uh, you know, I've got some seasoning, some cleaner. Here in Florida, this little device is a lifesaver. It's called Thermosil. It's a mosquito and biting insect repellent. I believe they sell them in Australia too. Somebody asked me about it and I Googled it a while back. It's a great product. So this one recharges on a USB. They have some that work off of but butane as well. This one recharges off a of USB and you turn it on and you just sit it out in your camping area and it creates a, a bubble where mosquitoes cannot be found mozzies and other biting insects so it's a pretty good piece of kit to have with you so i want to show you what i'm using for water right now and i'm going to relocate this i just put it up there on the roof with the u-bolts to uh, see what it would feel like it contains eight gallons of water and with the weight of the water tank and the water itself i think i'm at like i'm at like 70 pounds it's much too heavy i've got enough weight up there and when i go camping i throw my tent or my swag up there i have the uh, 30 second os tent and i have a single person swag and i also throw firewood up there and you know other things sometimes i throw my canoe or a stand-up paddleboard up there i don't need that weight there i'm going to mount it inside the vehicle but i just wanted to show it to you that was a mock-up just to test out what it felt like so it um it doesn't require any electricity it self pressurizes off your home faucet so you just connect your home faucet via the adapter on there to it the pressure of water you have at home it transfers water to your tank at that same pressure and if you want to you can increase the pressure by connecting to the if you want to you can increase the pressure by connecting your compressor to that little input right there and you can make it even stronger it's a good, a good uh, piece of kit if you need a water solution. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is my flip-up gullwing door. Uh, the guy, a guy named Land Cruiser Phil makes these, and they work for either side. It is black powder-coated aluminum. That's the one I chose. I think you can get it plain as well, but uh, it's a great little gadget. And let me get it set up here. So this is where my electrics terminate. Okay, so my rear battery or house battery is a 130 hour AGM battery, which I have right down here. It gets charged off of the front battery system via this BC to DC charger by Red Arc. This is a great piece of kit. I used to have a cheap device for that. That's something you should go cheap on in my opinion. The little switch that I had, I could never really tell if it was working. Initially, I could hear it click on and click off, click on and click off whenever, you know, a, it reached the correct voltage but i didn't trust it this red arc is amazing this is a 1500 watt inverter it's not sold by ronnie doll i just stuck a sticker on there and this is the um, circuit breaker that i use to disengage it when i'm not using it and i uh, have a little 20 inch flat screen tv that i sometimes take with me and i go camping and i just hang it right there and we can watch movies at camp little kids like that and okay i like it too but anyway so great piece of kit this uh system here i put some uh carpet on it some all-weather carpet but this is made by delta systems also the same people who make the brackets which i'm using my rooftop or excuse me my ceiling storage on so good piece of kit also check out some of my cool stickers thank you people who are sending me the stickers got one last thing to show you ronnie so uh this is a camera case or a gun case or it's just a foam case that you can uh, you know store something in and it's perfect for ensuring that libations make it safe it's perfect for making sure that libations make it safe to the bush so if you're trying to figure out how to carry some glass bottles with you 
out to the woods or on a camping trip and you want to make sure they don't break, this is a good solution. I think they sell these at a store called Harbor Freight here in the U.S. for $9.99. These little boxes, very cheap. And you just tear out the foam and you can get new foam inserts to put in here and, and shape them up again depending on what size uh, <clears throat> equipment you're going to keep in here. Hey, I am by no means a pro, but this is a little tip I like to share with people. If you're trying to figure out how to attach a GoPro to your vehicle, these little self-stick things are perfect. And then you don't have to worry about a suction cup falling off. You just put the put the little GoPro bracket right through there and you're all set. It's pretty cool. So my um, snorkel, I failed to mention that. Um, I got it on eBay and it's made for a Land Cruiser 80. It fits the lines perfectly. It came with a template. It's not a name brand snorkel, but it works great. And uh, I mean, it, I've got into some really deep water and haven't had a leak and I've checked. So anyway, another thing that you might not need to go name brand on. My tires and my wheels, those are stock wheels. Those are the ones that were sold on the vehicle back in 1996. I'm thinking about powder coating them black, but I uh, just not, have not done it yet. Those tires are actually a startup brand here in the US. They're called Thunderer and uh actually uh well can't tell the whole story but anyway they've been great tires this is my second set of them they wear well they're tough and uh the only complaint i have is they're kind of loud but other than that they're great tires so um people love this vehicle i love it and yesterday my wife and i went to a beach about an hour away and we had the vehicle parked in a couple of different parking lots during our trip there and three people messaged me on instagram to ask me what i would sell it for so um i mean that shows you right there it's not just that it looks cool either people know that a land cruiser 80 series can't be beat so there you go that's my 1996 land cruiser 80 series with uh 415 000 miles on it um so thanks for Ronnie for giving me an opportunity to show it. I appreciate what you do. Your videos are very helpful and also entertaining. You go to some great places. One of the things in particular that you helped me to understand when I first started tinkering with this vehicle was house electrics. And a lot of the things that I was able to put into practice, I learned by watching your videos on 12 volt systems and how to set up your house system. So thanks for that. Thanks again for giving me a chance to uh, show my vehicle off and check me out on YouTube and Instagram.